Hey y'all, Tanny Cooks here, and today I'm gonna show you how to make an absolutely delicious corned beef brisket. We're gonna roast this in the oven with a mustard marinade with some homemade seasoning blend that we're gonna put together. I'm gonna show you how to roast cabbage in your oven for a spectacular side dish. Let's get to cooking. The seasonings we're gonna use include ground mustard powder, smoked paprika, black pepper, onion powder, oregano leaves, garlic powder, bay leaves, celery flakes, and yellow mustard seeds, and of course, our stone ground mustard. And we have this beautiful corned beef. It's member's mark. I bought it from Sam's. Absolutely beautiful. And we're going to make some cabbage. I have one already open. So to start off with, I'm going to wash my meat. But I don't use the seasoning packet that comes with it. It's something in it that I don't like. I don't know if it's fennel or whatnot. But I just toss it away and I make my own seasoning blend with the seasonings that I showed you. Now I rinse off my meat with cool water and I don't cut off any of that fat. I take it out the water and let it sit to the side. So now I'm going to prep my onions for the pan that we're gonna cook the corned beef in. I'm just using two basic yellow onions and I slice them up in kind of big slices and place them in the bottom of my pan. You wanna bake your corned beef in a pan that's just slightly longer or wider than the corned beef, but you want the meat to fit snugly in the pan so that the juices that are released from the onions in the meat will raise up to the sides of the meat and keep it moist and tender. Now that my onions are in the bottom of the pan, I'm just gonna place my corned beef that's been cleaned on top of the onions and I'm going to turn it over and make sure I dry it off well with the paper towel. We're gonna season it now and I don't want the seasonings to be diluted with extra water. So take a knife and just put a few slits into your meat this way we can add the seasonings and stuff some onions into those slits to help make sure our seasoning penetrates throughout the meat and is not just on the outer surface. I'm using organic coconut aminos. I use this in place of Worcestershire sauce or soy sauce because I'm allergic to soy. So if you have Worcestershire sauce, then you can use a teaspoon or two of that or you can use liquid smoke. I'm also adding some minced garlic just a couple of tablespoons add this to your liking of course you could add um, fresh garlic if you chop that up now i'm using yellow mustard seed i know this is one of the things that comes in the little packet that comes with the corned beef i'm adding celery flakes not a lot just enough to give it a little season i'm adding oregano leaves and poultry seasoning. I have a link to this in the description box to order on Amazon. It's absolutely delicious on meat beyond just chicken. And I'm adding my garlic powder, onion powder, and my stone ground mustard. Now you can use mustard of any type, but I like stone ground for the extra texture and flavor it has. I'm also adding some smoked paprika. So for seasonings, anything but salt and pepper, you can add about a tablespoon and then just go light on pepper. I don't add any salt because corned beef tends to be salty enough for me. I added just a little bit of black pepper, and now I'm just massaging everything into the meat. I'm making sure that I add the seasonings into the slits that I cut, the mustard and the dry seasonings, and I'm giving it a rub with a gloved hand. And I turn over the corned beef to make sure that I season all sides, the top, bottom, and the thick sides. You can also push in some of your onion slices into the slits in the meat. Onion releases its onion flavored juices as it cooks down. So I definitely wanna get that flavor infused into my meat and this is a great way to do it. Massaging your meat also helps to tenderize it. Sometimes people use a meat beater thing to do it, but I just do it with my hands. And now I'm just making sure that there are onions on the bottom of the meat in the pan, and I'm also adding onions on top. So we're gonna get that delicious flavor through and through. You can absolutely make this dish without onions, but I definitely prefer it. And here's a close-up shot of this beautifully seasoned meat. So notice there's not a lot of space around the meat and the onions. Now, I am going to add a little bit of liquid if you have water, you can add water. This is bay leaves that I've added in this shot. I've had them on hand and I love to add them when I have something that's gonna have brazen liquid or boiling liquid. So instead of adding water, I'm gonna add beef stock that I've had on hand. I used a little bit yesterday for a different recipe and I'm not adding a lot. You notice I'm adding a few tablespoons, so maybe about half a cup 
not a lot at all. The meat and the onions will release juice. I'm going to bake mine at 325 degrees for three hours until the internal temp is 185 degrees. So the amount of time it takes to cook yours will depend on its weight. Now I'm going to prep my cabbage. This cabbage is going to be absolutely delicious roasted, so I just wash it with water and vinegar, and then I give it a nice chop up. I'm cutting it into big squares, fork size squares though, so you see I have most of it in the pan already. So now I'll just show you one little piece that I will chop for you. You can cut your cabbage however you want. You can cut it thinly or you can cut it thick. I'm cutting mine kind of medium size. This is how I like to roast it. Roasting cabbage is so much more delicious than boiling it or steaming it. The roasting process just adds such a delicious flavor. Now I'm doing this in a 13 by 9 baking pan with extra virgin olive oil. You absolutely could do this on a cookie sheet or baking dish. I'm adding seasonings like garlic powder, onion powder. And I'm adding a tablespoon to start with. Now, the great thing about cabbage is that it's just a raw vegetable, so you can absolutely taste your cabbage with the seasoning on it before you cook it. I'm adding a sprinkle of black pepper. Black pepper is a must with cabbage. And again, that poultry seasoning, this is a vegan seasoning, but McCormick determined, well, I guess a lot of seasoning companies determine a blend of spices that tastes good on poultry, so they call it poultry seasoning, but it's really good on meats and vegetables. So now with a gloved hand, I'm just massaging my cabbage just to make sure I get the oil and the seasonings on all of the pieces. And I'm breaking up any big chunks of cabbage with my hand. I'm also giving this a seasoning with a season called no salt. So it doesn't contain any sodium. And then of course, you know, I have to come in with my smoked paprika. It's going to add a little bit of color, but a lot of delicious flavor. I love the smokiness of smoked paprika. But if you see me use any seasoning that you don't like, you absolutely don't have to use it. You can season your food however you like it. But I find this seasoning is so delicious that I don't miss having butter or bacon grease with my cabbage when I use this blend of seasoning. So I definitely recommend it. And look at that, y'all. Beautifully seasoned cabbage. And you can taste a piece now and tell for yourself how great it is. So we're going to roast this in the oven. I roast my cabbage in the oven at 350 degrees alongside the corned beef for a total of about 25 to 30 minutes. But every five minutes or so, you want to go in and stir the cabbage so one part of it doesn't get too charred. And then your cabbage is ready and your corned beef is ready. Look at how delicious this corned beef looks, y'all. It's absolutely perfect. It's moist. It's succulent. And the seasonings on the outside are beautiful with a nice texture, but the flavor penetrates through the inside of the meat. I didn't add any salt to the meat and it is absolutely perfect as is and the onions give a nice flavor and you can see how it shrank down a bit but look at how moist it is in that beautiful texture of that stone ground mustard it's not gritty or anything it's just a nice beautiful flavor and texture thank you so much for watching this video please subscribe to my channel